Good morning, evening, afternoon to wherever you are in the world. And we're back with another podcast episode. And we have a special guest who is J.E. Glass. And she was actually one of the people that inspired me to create this podcast. And her book is in print form. So I decided to ask her, would she come back? And she did. So can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you've been up to for the past couple of years? Absolutely. Hey, all. I'm uh, J.E. Glass, as uh, Dimitri so happily uh, introduced me. And uh, I say I've been uh, pretty much up to the standard of what you would expect of putting a book into publish or into publication, um, running that gambit, especially in uh, terms of self-publishing and uh, trying to get my head around the game. It's uh, it's a lot different than what I anticipated uh, than what Trad initially is. So uh, that's pretty much been my all and everything since launching in April is, is just trying to, to get my feet under me and figure out, you know, where to place my steps and how to further my career essentially on my shoulders alone. And then, of course, you know, other real life things that uh, go on in the background. So why did you decide to come back onto the podcast? I love doing it with you. I thought it was an amazing um, adventure the first time that we uh, we launched this off together. And uh, I thought it'd be really neat to come back, you know, with a, a book in hand and uh, to kind of jump from there and, and, uh, and see what we could uh, talk about. Mm -hmm. I love the first time when I did it with you. And that's kind of why I continue to do it with multiple authors. You, Nicholas, and one other author has been basically my favorite <laughs> because it's just like the conversation flowed so naturally and we <laughs> just got along perfectly. I'm glad, yeah, definitely glad to hear that. I always feel a little weird, like, you know, talking about myself or doing things like this. It's like, oh my God, what do I say? So I'm glad that the first time was, <laughs> was enjoyable. <laughs> and then the first time was actually kind of even funnier because I forgot to record <laughs> so the second you, time. Yeah, you, yeah, you did. <laughs> so the second time I was just sitting there like, oh, wow. <laughs> So why did you decide to transfer the undergrounder into print format? I really wanted to reach a broader audience and while I love ebooks, um I actually don't read ebook all that often. It's a it's a bit difficult on my eyes. Um so I don't have an e-reader. I mean, I've got my phone, but even that I can't only use like, you know, for so many hours before my eyes get tired. So I really wanted to to bring a physical book into the world uh, to give people who are like me and who just love to, you know, thumb through a book. There's nothing quite like, you know, being able to to have that like new book smell when you crack something open. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted that physical representation like in my hands. Um, as well as being able to uh, to do like signings, physical signings, and to go into bookstores and actually have a product to uh, present to them and be like, hey, can you sell my stuff for me? <laughs> so speaking of that, like what was the process of taking this from Wattpad to an actual printed book? So there were a couple of steps and there was a lot of stumbling blocks along the way. And I think I'm better versed at it now than what I was when I started. Uh, so I had to get, you know, first the editors and the proofreaders. Um, and I found um, amazing people over on uh, Twitter. Uh, they are now my pretty much full-time editors and, and uh, proofreaders. I'll go back to them at all points. Um, but you have to start there, you know, get your manuscript cleaned up. Um, and then from that point, uh, you go to formatting. Um, I have a lovely formatter. They did an amazing job getting it ready for ebook and for physical print. Uh, then I work with my cover artist, Ashley, uh, to make sure that the you know cover was you know, good enough to go around the book, uh, make all the, the different uh, necessary mathematical changes, which I actually didn't realize there were a lot of that. Uh, there was a lot of that in the process. Um, so tweaking the cover and the back and the blurb, and then, then finding the publishing that I wanted to go through. And I looked around a lot. Um, I first thought perhaps I would go with Ingram, but Ingram's had some, uh, Ingram Spark is the one I'm speaking of, um, has had some issues in the past with quality as well as some other um, less than savory side effects uh, that I really didn't want to get into. And uh, the other, only other one that actually had a really good uh, print reputation aside from Amazon, which I didn't, you know, all my eggs in one basket, didn't want to do that, was Lulu Publishing. And that's who I actually uh, crafted the uh, physical book through was Lulu. And they have an amazing print quality. I think that was the, the one that I sent you might have been one of the Lulu proofs. Um, it's absolutely gorgeous. The, I mean, the cover just came out so good. The pages are crisp. The printing is amazing. Um, so yeah, all those steps led to, you know, getting my first box of books, you know, box of 50 and being able to sit there and be like, wow, there's my baby. <laughs> 
Yeah. I I want I can't wait. Like I'm in the final stages personal editing. So now I have to find my own editors and formatters and mm-hmm. such and such. So I can't yeah. wait to actually have it. And I'm just gonna like I might cry. I really might. Um, yeah, when when you get to that point, yeah, please reach out. I will connect you with uh, with who I have and and you know, see if it works for your budget because that's definitely was something I needed with someone who would work with mine. You know, even if I have a full time job, it's still pricey. Um, so yeah, just let me know. So you kind of already answered this, but could you go into a bit more detail about like some specific difficulties that you had? I think it was getting the formatting correct and the cover. Those were the two hardest points. Um, I ran into a couple issues with the formatting uh, just because I had last minute changes that need to be made. And um, so having to go back and forth with my formatter and uh, getting those, it was just, you know, small, like irksome things and nothing on his, uh, that was his uh, fault. Definitely all on mine. And then just, you know, Loading it up into Lulu, you have to make sure that you have all your specs, you know, all your little duckies in a row or else it'll kick it back with, hey, there's an error. Please fix this. Hey, there's an error. Um, So it was just it's the frustrating part of going into that blind and having no idea how to do it um, and not having anyone to fall back on and be like, is this correct? What am I doing? So I think that was the hardest part was just learning the basics Mm -hmm. and and stumbling and hanging the stumbling blocks and learning. So speaking of those like difficulties, why did you decide to go this route rather than traditional publish? I had tried to do traditional publishing. I'd done the trad route and um, I gotten plenty of rejection. I did the querying process. I did that for about a year and I just, I wasn't getting any traction, no requests, Mm -hmm. which is fine. You know, you have to, you know, there's some people, you know, you query a hundred, 200, 300 times before you find that right agent. Mm -hmm. But the more I kind of looked into the traditional publishing process, the more I really didn't like the lack of, or the, the control or lack of control that um, authors actually have over their work. Um, I had a very specific idea of what I wanted my cover to look like. I had a very specific idea of how I wanted my story to be told. I didn't want somebody who didn't know me and didn't know the story I was trying to tell dictating what I needed to do, but also it was the money aspect. Um, Right now I make back about 70% royalty on what I'm making roughly about um, that's not like the, the solid number because each platform takes a little more, but uh-huh. I make about 70% royalty and that's a far cry from what I would be making, uh, with a trad publisher, which would be around 20 to 30%. Uh-huh. So it's more money in my pocket. I still have to spend money in order to make that money. But at the end of the day, I have ultimate control. Mm-hmm. I also kind of decided on self-publishing just because of that reason, because I have a specific vision in for my books, for my book series. And I also drop a lot of hints and I do certain weird and unusual things, I'll say, for novels. And if I have to, like, take that out or re-edit it or change a scene, that might, like, change my whole plot line. So that's why I also personally did self-publishing. All right. yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah, you definitely have that control, and you know, you know yourself what's coming, and you really don't want someone who doesn't know, you know, the ins and outs of your brain dictating what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, in this case, you know, the author does know best. At least that's you know, I've always I stick by my guns on that. Is that we know our stories best. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so that I I like that you were like Meh, maybe not, maybe I should <laughs> you know take control of this. Mm-hmm. Uh. So you you actually already answered this question, which was why did you choose KDP over other self-publishing programs? But like if KDP was not existing, who who would be your winner? Um, I probably would have gone through um, draft to digital uh, mm-hmm. since, like I said, Ingram, I really wasn't, I'm not happy with their business practices. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a lot of hinky stuff that's happened recently with Ingram and I'm just, I'm, I'm not willing to take that risk. Uh, so it would have been draft to digital, um, even though they do use Ingram for the printing, um, they are their own entities. Uh, so I would have been able at least to sell through there. And I know there's a couple of other um uh, publishing sites that I'm not thinking of at the moment because I always forget when I'm you know on the spot of like oh yeah I know that and forget it but um, so it probably would have been drafted digital if KDP wasn't a uh, an option also on um, Barnes Noble which I was using um, and still am for a, a hard copy through there I did take the digital version off of Barnes Noble because next month I will be running uh, a three month period for doing Kindle Unlimited uh, to see uh, how that works out. 
Okay. So with what with all you've been through, would you recommend more Wetpad authors switch over and do like a self publishing or a traditional publishing, or just change your novel into a printed version in general? That one's a little bit difficult to answer because each person kind of has a different path and it's all in what you want out of your novels. Um, Wattpad in and of itself is an amazing entity. Um, It gave me a really awesome platform um, in the beginning and I do believe that they are focused more on their their writers and their readers than most. Um, But it ultimately kind of comes down to, you know, are you willing to put in the work? And that's kind of what I would have to ask somebody who's trying to make that decision if Wattpad gives you that opportunity where they're like, hey, we'll sponsor you, obviously, like, you know, make mm-hmm. sure that they check all your boxes. And if that's the way you want to go, definitely follow that route. But if it's really something that you're like, eh, I'm not happy with how you're doing X, Y, and Z, you know, then maybe, yeah, I'll, you know, check out self-publishing. But I mean, it is, it's a lot of work. And that's something that I heard when I first started out. And I never discredited that. I knew it was, but I didn't know, like, how much. Um, so... So with a better understanding of that now, it's just like, oh, yeah, if you want to self-publish, absolutely. If you feel that's the route you want to go, definitely. But just know that there is a lot that goes into it, and it's going to take time. Mm-hmm. I 100%, 1,000% agree because in the beginning, I was just like, oh, if I self-publish, I get to do everything on my own. And then I realized you do everything on your own. You have uh-huh. to go out and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta uh-huh. go out and hire these people to do it for you. But they'll never do that unless you hire them. Yeah, so, yeah, and but it, and then it's you know who do I go to? Who's reputable? Yeah. Who's not? You know mm-hmm. uh, who's gonna take my money? You know who's you know, better bang for my buck? And you yeah. got like all these things. You know it, mm-hmm. you're bombarded mm-hmm. with information. So yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> um, seeing as Wattpad is kind of like a social media account. A social media account, how do you think authors should use it to go about building their brand? Um, I, since I haven't been on Wattpad in a hot minute, because um, I've been focusing on getting underground or published, um, mm-hmm. I do know that when I was there, they they still had the uh, the forum rooms where you could go and chat and such, and I know that they moved to Discord. So I think it would just be like with any social media, you need to make a social media presence, and you have to kind of put the effort into reaching out and uh, making friends and also making like essentially like business acquaintances Mm -hmm. uh, with people where, you know, I don't do read for reads because I'm abysmally slow reader, but (laughs) if you were someone who reads extremely fast, you know, that would be something to look into. Um, What I really love uh, with like using Twitter is that I've been able to really build my brand, but I've also been able to reach out and connect to an amazing group of people in the writing community, uh, some of which have become very close friends of mine. Um, so it's just, it's really amazing. And it's also really important to just put yourself out there and to start getting your name known. And that also takes time. So that's, you know, once again, it's like, you, you're not going to, it's not going to be TikTok famous overnight. You gotta, you gotta work at it. Um, you might win the lottery and you might have a viral tweet and suddenly, you know, have like 10,000 followers. But even then you have to have, you know, something to offer them to kind of keep them around. So with social media, it's just, it's practice. Like with all things, just keep working at it. Build your platform, build your readership, build some friends and go from there. And again, I seem only to agree with you because you just make amazing points. And with your Twitter especially, like when I get on there, it's you're interacting with people, you're commenting, you're sharing your thoughts. Uh, Like it's just so like an inviting community that I do feel like that's, that's a contributing factor on why I think I like the undergrounder imprint format because I know I can get on there and be like, oh, this character did this. And you'll probably reply and be like, yeah, da 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 da. And we'll just have like a oh, nice yeah. little laugh. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, that's my, that is like, obviously, I'd like to be able to, you know, make a solid living off of my writing. You know, every author wants you know, to be, you know, the next, you know, Stephen King or, you know, Dan Brown. Um, but, Honestly, like I just want fandom. Like I, money would be great, but I want people to scream at Same. me with my, you know, about my characters. Yeah, like just I want fan art. I want fix. I want people mm-hmm. to come in and, and just be like, "How dare you hurt my baby?" And then mm-hmm. we just be able to taunt them. And we have like you know fights, mock fights over like I want that shit. Yeah, um, I want like I want like the you know the Tamsin uh, Lock Tomb style fandom. Like, give me all that. I want people to cry when they get a signed version of my book. Absolutely. I want fresh tears. <laughs> I want people to come up to me at a con and cosplay so that I can scream and cry and yes. like take all the pictures with yeah. 
Um, so I want to ask again. I asked you this the last time. What are you reading right now? Right now, I am actually reading The Stardust Thief, um, and I completely blank on the author because I am terrible at remembering names. Um, but it's The Stardust Thief, and it is actually it's a it's a fabulous um, kind of like a reimagining of mm -hmm. um, Arabian Nights. Uh, with its own kind of like special twist to it. Uh, I, I absolutely love the world building. Um, I love the main characters and I love where it's going. Um, so that's what I'm reading now. Uh, finished, before that I finished uh, Ms. Rule um, by, I think I have the book behind me. I think it's Heather Walters. Yes, I finished Ms. Rule by Heather Walters and then Malice before that. So I hurt my feelings a lot with those. <laughs> I haven't read any like cry your heart out stories in the past couple of months. I've read Marvel of Mystic, which is the book I just released a podcast episode on in June. Um, I read, I am currently reading The Ivies by uh, Alexa Dunn. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> um, I read The Undergrounder. Um, and then right before that, I reread They Both Die at the End in anticipation of Adam's new novel, The First to Die at the End. So that's kind of my reading turn. I mean, I... I I don't know why, like, with just that title alone, you'd be like, wow, that kind of does seem like it would hurt just a smidge. <laughs> I mean, the first time, it was painful. But now I'm just like, I want to see the new people die. <laughs> right, yeah, now you're in that status point where you're like, yes, let's suffer together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm just like, I, I still feel it. It's still a little pain there, but it's just like, I know when he released that new one, it's gonna be I'm gonna be done for. Right. I think the the last book that actually like got me into like actual full tears where I had to set it down and just like sob in my squad car was uh, the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I, I I didn't sign up to have that kind of emotional trauma laid on me. I was embarrassed, crying at work while I'm sitting there <laughs> reading, <laughs> like having to pretend like while I do my crossings, like no children, I'm not sobbing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so that that hurt my feelings a bit but uh yeah the 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 other ones that i'm reading like uh, malice and misrule it, it definitely is like ooh, ooh, oh oh that definitely hurt that stings a bit mm -hmm. um but it wasn't you know cry your eyes out you know sob on your bed two in the morning you know mm -hmm. awake staring at the ceiling kind of pain yeah <laughs> that's that i'm looking for the next because <laughs> <laughs> we're always looking for that next fix yes that that, that next fix exactly like you said yeah. <laughs> So why did you decide to put Underground or up um, for sale during Pride Month? Well, it's a uh, Pride Month, um, so I really <laughs> wanted to get it into as many queer hands, and maybe not queer hands as possible, um, but it's also my birthday month. Um, my birthday's on the 25th. Yeah, so I wanted to uh, to kind of give back a bit, you know, while still being able to make a little bit of revenue. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, I just I wanted to get as many eyes on it as possible. Um, and I've actually had a, an amazing sale uh, run right now. I think I'm up at like 160 sold in the month. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's doing great. Uh, I hope all those people go in and please review. <laughs> like, please, I need to. Please okay. review. <laughs> With my review, I'm launching a website in January, hopefully, fingers crossed, and I don't run into any more kinks, and I have, I'm writing the full review on that website, but I'm also awesome. going to put the sub review on um, Goodreads and Amazon. So. Absolutely appreciate it. Yes, um, I, yes. Thank you so much. I do. We we, we authors ask so little. Just you know, money and reviews, please. <laughs> but I I would be scared because as soon as I like, because you know you can see your what star yeah. level you're at, and then as soon as it like it, at five, I'm going to be like off the wall. At four, I'm still going to be off the wall. But as soon as they drop down to three or to two, I'm just going to be looking like. Whew. <laughs> I won't lie and say that it doesn't sting. And I think I've only gotten like two or three, like three star reviews. And even then I was like, ooh, why? Um, we, we just, we got to remember that like the reviews aren't meant for us. It's meant for readers. Yeah. Um, and people still read even if it's got low reviews because they want to see why. Uh -huh. So any review is good review because it boosts you in the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, no, it is terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying to put your work out there and be like, please be nice. Be nice. <laughs> Please don't hurt me. Could you tell me about this cover? Because I love it. Um, can you tell me like how it was made, what it means, like foreshadowing, da 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 da, et cetera? Well, there's, there, I think there's going to be more foreshadowing in the Topsider cover. Um, but okay. um, actually, a hand, I think, 
Henkins, I'm please, Ashley, don't kill me if I pronounce that incorrectly. Oh my God. Um, Ashley is my cover artist and we, we really wanted to kind of go about the cover in a different manner. And I know that's not really, it's very vague. So let me explain on that. Um, a lot of romance novels, especially like lesbian romance or sapphic romance, they tend to have the same type of novel where it's got like, you know, the the silhouetted body of a, a lean figure, um, usually from the lips down at a at a, a sh at a slight angle with the uh, shadowing, and you know, there's usually something salacious over the front to kind of you know give away that there's like some sexiness to it, mm -hmm. and. I really didn't want to do any of that uh, at all. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, it, Undergrounder is a romance. Um, that is, it's billed as a romance. It's, you know, Beauty and the Beast retelling. So there it is in the title. Um, but it's also the beginning of an urban fantasy and a, a beginning to a, a wider world that will be mm -hmm. later explored in the other books. So I really wanted to kind of capture on both of those. So I thought, you know, what's an enticing cover for something like that, oh well, we should bring one of the MCs and Alex. Well, you know, we love her to death. She is rather plain. I mean, <laughs> like, God bless her. She's she's a disaster gay. We we, we love mm -hmm. you know we love our our, <laughs> our our queen who is you know the uh, our our self deprecating queen. We yeah, love our um, yeah our our queen we love our knack for for yeah. picking pick me our queen who got on that. What, what did she get on? The why am I drawing a blank? What is the tower that uh Lee took her to? Oh, no. the Empire State Building. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. We love our queen. Also, we love her. The 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 queen of uh of escaping death um, oh, multiple oh, times. Multiple yeah. back to back. Multiple, yeah, back. Yeah, just just <laughs> Maybe, evading. No, I impossible. wouldn't even say it's escaping death. I would say it's dying and then waking up. <laughs> I mean, this is I, there. There's that at least, but then there's a couple of other points where you're like, "Why are you so stupid? Why are you like this?" But so, well, we love Alex. We do love we, Alex. We do. You know, our, our our disaster queen. But she's not really, you know, somebody who would be interesting on a cover. But Lee, oh my God, you know, here we are, the cinnamon roll monster girl, who's mm -hmm. you know got a heart of gold. I um, was like, well, the thing that gets me is the eyes. Oh my God, that yeah, <laughs> Ashley, uh, yeah. She's got a thing for glowing eyes. She was like, can I make her eyes glow? I'm like, please do. Please, please. I, I need to simp. <laughs> Bow down. I'm to, bowing down. I, I, I need to simp at my, 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 uh, my trash queen, um, my, my poor cinnamon roll baby who just deserves all the good, good things in the world. Um, but yeah, so we really wanted to, to do her. And that was, who doesn't want to do her? I mean, but... Uh <laughs> <laughs> but um, we really wanted to show her in the forefront and mm -hmm. we wanted that, you know, that beckoning, you know, handout, please come on an adventure with me, you know, while you know, the way that she looks, you're like, oh my God, what is this monster creature? But she looks kind and she's got her hand out. And so we wanted that, that hook to a potential reader of, you know, ooh, this is really interesting. And then they go and they read the blurb and they're like, oh, it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Ooh, mm -hmm. so... But yeah, the, the Top Sider cover, that's going to be a lot different. And I can't wait uh, to drop that at some point soon. Mm, okay. I, I can't, I can't uh, hint of anything because it'll, it'll give some stuff away. But uh, I think people are going to be so mad at me. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, fun fact, really quickly before we move on to the next question. I don't know why. I remember that Undergrounder had a happy ending. I don't know where my brain I got that from, and then I reread. Where did you get that from? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like I was like, "Why did I think this had a happy ending?" And then I re read the ending again, and I was just like, "It hurts a little," but I'm not gonna say that because I've read this before, and I don't want to. I I don't I don't understand how in my mind I got confused and thought this had a happy ending. Oh, what is that syndrome where you know you you kind of make up your own um, you know happiness around the <laughs> trauma that you've been exposed yeah. to? You're like, that... oh, they all lived happily ever after. Damn it! <laughs> yes, because I don't know why. Because I completely, completely altered the scene where um, Alex is getting in the elevator and going back up topside. For some reason, I thought Lee was with her and they lived happily oh, ever. No. After. I don't know why. I don't know how that got in my mind, but that was my viewpoint. And then I reread it and I was just like, 
hold on. It got your feelings hurt. Yeah. Yeah. I was wait. like, hold on. <laughs> Do you believe that authors should draw and design their own book cover? If you have the talent, by God, do it. Um, I always tell people if I had the capabilities to draw and write stories, y'all would be fucked because like <laughs> I would be all powerful. Mm-hmm. Like, I would, I would be like the you know the queen of webtoons at this forget, point. No, you know, forget like, queen empress conqueror would, all right yeah i would be the empress of of webtoons like lore who no no it, no never mind but um if you have the capabilities of doing it do it um however let me put that in you know huge bold brackets however um i do feel like if you don't have that capability or if you're unsure please Find someone who can design you a good cover. I know so many people, so many really good writers who have amazing stories, absolutely stellar stories that go nowhere because they have a cover that they created essentially in Canva. Um, And that's not a knock against Canva. It's an amazing site. I use it too. Um, But if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know how to create a good grabbing cover... Mm-hmm. Your book's not going to go anywhere because your cover is your first hook, and I will I will pound that into the pavement until it is you know, cemented there for eternity. Your cover is your first hook, your book blurb is your second hook, and your third is going to be your first chapter. Um, so, just yeah, th- keep that in mind when you know any anybody listening, you know, keep that in mind when you go to start, you know possibly writing or, you know, to do the self-published route or to do the indie route. Um, Think about a cover. Think about what you want. And if you can't create that yourself, then approach somebody. And there are thousands of people who are out there willing to help you with your cover. I mean, Ashley, I was just lucky enough to run across her page. Mm -hmm. And I reached out on a whim. And she was like, yeah, let's definitely work together. And we ended up creating a friendship from it. Um, and she will be my cover creator from now till whenever I'm done writing. Um, so, yeah, which will not be for a while. <laughs> you guys have got it for, for a bit. Um, but so, yeah, that's the, the long winded way of saying if you can do it, definitely. If you can't or you feel like maybe you can't, find someone who can. So, are you happy with the current standing of Undergrounder? I am I am absolutely ecstatic with this standing cover. I would change nothing about it. I absolutely love my baby. And I love the fact that I have a uh, a seven foot standee of that cover that I put behind my table when I do signings. I'm like, look at my uh-huh. baby. Look at this child. Don't you love this child? Look at her. Okay, so I didn't know that. I kinda wanna see a picture with you next <laughs> the standing. Oh, you didn't see? Oh, you didn't see my big, my my big standy? Oh no, no! I took a picture of it when I did my Barnes and Noble signing. I'll have to send it to you. Yes, that's all I was asking. Could I, you send I, it to me? Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. You're fine. That I will absolutely, absolutely do that. Mm-hmm. And if you don't mind my asking, I was wondering if you could tell us, like, what is like, how are you making money from Underground? Or is it a lot? Is it a little? Is it livable? Is it? Is that um, something you're willing so to I'm, share? I'm, right. Um, I'm making a, a fair amount right now. Um, I think like all together within the past 90 days, I think I've made maybe about almost 600 mm-hmm. in, in, uh, royalties, which in 90 days, you know, divide that by three, it's not a humongous amount of money. Um, but I've pretty much paid for uh, my cover or at least the first, you know, two runs of prints that I had. So, uh, it, it's coming in. Uh, I don't expect, like I said, I, I wasn't expecting to make huge money at any point. Um, but it, it's doing fairly well. And that's why I wanted to run uh, with the uh, Kindle Unlimited and see because Kindle Unlimited, unfortunately, because, you know, Amazon rules all. Uh, we do love Daddy Bezos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I hate it so much. Um <laughs> My wife's in the background just looking at me, giving me the <laughs> worst look right now. Um, but Kindle Unlimited does allow uh, for books to kind of rise in the ranks in terms of, like, algorithm. So I'd like to see what kind of money it could make in three months on there. But for right now, it, at least it's enough to afford um, to kind of soften any uh, blows for my bills. I can pay, you know, what I can um, for my bills, and I'm more or less breaking even. So I, I'd say it's a win. Okay. So I didn't know you had book signing, so I asked, 
uh, do you plan to do book signing? Signing. So could you just tell me the history of your book signings and any future ones? Um. So I. I do have one coming up. Um, it's going to be uh, at the Bull Run Library in Manassas uh, on the 17th of July. Uh, I will be doing, I think it's a STEM or STEAM uh, program that Barnes Noble is putting together, my local Barnes Noble is putting together, and they're going to have local authors there to, uh, you know, kind of just, you know, if it's STEAM, then it's the arts, so they want to be authors available. Uh, I So I do preface this is that, I have grown up with my Barnes & Noble. Uh, I moved here uh, to my town when I was eight, and that was like the first place that I went. And I have been going to that one since, and I am now 34. So I have essentially <laughs> grown up there. And so they have you know, watched me. The same managers have pretty much watched me over the years, and they knew that I wrote. Um, so when it came around the time that I was releasing on the uh, 1st of April, uh, one of the managers, a friend of mine, approached me and was like, hey, would you like to come and do a signing? We, we actually do signings for our local authors. Um, and this is for anybody listening. You can actually approach a Barnes, you know, your local Barnes & Noble and ask. They do signings for local authors, and they usually do them in six-month uh, intervals. So you would do a signing, wait six months, and then do another signing. Um, so I said, yes, I would absolutely love to do a signing. And they sign, you know, set me up, and uh, they provided a table, and they would do... Uh, little shout outs throughout the day. I was there for about four hours. Um, they did little shout outs and um, you know, people would come over and you know, like what you would expect in a signing. You have to kind of, you know, sell yourself there. Uh, and then at the end of the day, however much you make, you make back at 70% uh, consignment. So I made 70% off of what I charged, which was sixteen ninety nine for the book. So yeah, it was actually, you know, I think I ended up selling like 12 copies that day. Um, so it was, yeah, it was a pretty good, uh, pretty good signing. I didn't know. Well, I'm lucky enough to be have to be gifted a already signed copy, but I would have been there if I could have, if I even known about it. And I just want you to know that my signed book is definitely going to be a family heirloom. <laughs> read oh. this book. <laughs> it really is. Like I'm really going to make my kids read the book. I'm like, I got this signed. <laughs> like just telling them about how I started a podcast. I'm so happy about I met. That. Yeah, like I. I, I know I said a lot, but I really do feel like you were one of the people that pushed me into taking that next step because I've been writing since oh, I'm glad to hear sixth that. grade. So for you to like, for you just to be an amazing person and then for your book to be so amazing, I feel like that was the push I needed to say like, okay, I want to be like her. Let me, let me get up there. <laughs> let oh, me go. Let me get started. Oh, no. I appreciate that. Thank you. And I appreciate you more. Um, <laughs> could you tell me how much, like the total price tag, if you could like estimate, guesstimate, how much it costs to put the undergrounder into print format? Um, let's see. Uh, if we're not counting the, if we're not counting the cover, um, let me let me do a quick. I I'm not a math gay, so give me one second. Let me think of. <laughs> I let me have think no... of those numbers. I am the best math gay. I, I just want to put that out there. Okay. I'm actually going to open up my, my calculator app right here on my computer <laughs> so I can act like I actually know what I'm doing. Um, I think it was like 135 for my editing. And I know it was 120 for the formatting. And then I ended up making an error um, and uh, almost had the entire book scrubbed. Uh, so that was a, a fun little mishap. Um, anybody listening, be very careful when you go onto Fiverr and uh, try to find a proofreader. The one that I uh, made the misfortune of uh, getting a hold of uh, charged a fairly uh, substantial amount of money and then completely wrecked my entire manuscript um, from from the first page to the last. It was pretty much completely obliterated i had to scramble and get a friend of mine involved and we, and we essentially tag team for a week straight trying to, to fix everything that they did oh. Ooh. so not counting that foobar um and then let's do for the cover so i'm looking at give or take um in the ballpark of about uh 1200 um, and the only reason why I was able to to kind of shell out that is that I, I preface this, I do have a job, um, a full-time job, and I was able to squirrel away money 
uh, to be able to pay for that. I know 1200 is a lot for people who don't have the means that I did. Um, and I understand that. And that is definitely a, a chunk of change. Um, yeah. But that was getting a professional cover done. Uh, that was my FUBAR with the, the one person on Fiverr. And then that was also mm -hmm. my uh, my editing and my uh, formatting. So mm -hmm. all of that combined, it was about 1200 So, mm -hmm. And I, I only ask this question because I want to give people an accurate estimate of what it really takes to produce the quality that you did. And, right. And like right. with me who wants to self-publish, that's a good like – not necessarily in all be all, but maybe thing I can keep in the back of my mind when I go to do the process. Right, and that is def yeah, 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 that is. I would say anywhere between twelve and fifteen hundred um, is a good amount to have set aside. You might spend less than that. You never know. Um, it, it all depends. Like Undergrounder is a bit of a hefty book. Um, it is at one hundred and twenty thousand words. Uh, so that did mean that there was a little bit more that went into uh, editing it. If you have a smaller book, it'll be less. Um, if you do novellas, it'll be even less than that. Um, I will say, you know, once again, you know, pay for a good artist if you, you need to get somebody to do your book for you uh -huh. uh, or do the book cover. Um, so that'll probably set you back because, you know, artists need to be paid their due uh -huh. diligence. Um, but beyond that, yeah, about that much is kind of what you look at for getting it published, at least into the part of, like, the professional publishing. Mm -hmm. So just a random question that came to my mind. If what is the section you think authors should put the most money in? Um, I think that's going to be both your cover and your editing. Um, so, like... We can self-edit all that we want. And if you're really good at editing, that's great. Uh, but once you've read your manuscript, you know, a thousand times, you are going to skim over easy okay. mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, so putting the money and having somebody who can actually copy edit or line edit for you, it's going to make all the difference in the world, especially if you're self-publishing. And I do love self-published books. You know, there are some really amazing ones out there, but then there's some also not amazing ones mm -hmm. out there. Um, and a lot of people, when they they hear self-published, they immediately think that, you know, oh, it's subpar because there are unfortunately so many people out there who don't put that time and effort into it. Mm -hmm. um, so it is kind of on our backs, unfortunately, to break that stigma. Uh, so, yeah, definitely put the money into getting a good editor and then uh, look into getting a good cover. Those are the two hooks that you definitely need. Mm -hmm. So can we, I know you kind of already answered this one. Look at you. <laughs> uh when can we expect the hardcover version of the Undergrounder? So I hadn't thought about doing it yet, um, just because oh. I haven't found um, a printer that I like yet. I've heard mm -hmm. that Lulu doesn't do bad on hardcovers, but they are a bit more pricey. And I, Amazon has only just launched their most yep. recent, um, like, I think it's it's still in the beta feature. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, so I, I might try it and see. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll do a back-to-back -back of the two. If I did do Undergrounder um, hard copies, they would be in very, very limited supply. Mm -hmm. And more likely, I would do an order form for them to see, you know, how many people would be interested. And once I got, you know, X amount of people interested, then I would place an order. Mm-hmm. Uh, put me down now. <laughs> put me down. <laughs> so Dimitri is at the top of the list. Put, that now. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. put me down. Um, I mean, I love hardcovers. I love uh, paperbacks. And if I really love a book, I get both. So <laughs> that's just another one to add for me. And I, I, I de yeah, absolutely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I bought, even though you gifted me one, which I'm extremely grateful, I did buy one. To support you. I, I seriously do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Did I? I think I did. Didn't I send you the picture with me in it? No, no. I don't think you ever did. I, oh, I, I must have sent it to my friend because I was like, I got another one. <gasps> <laughs> betrayal. The betrayal. Um, that's the, the betrayal. <laughs> the betrayal. So, um, Oh, can we expect a special edition of um, the Undergrounder? And what I mean by this is the Hate You Give actually has a special edition where she, the author, she includes more material on like 
this is was the process this was the process of me creating this book and this was the backstory and this is what I was going through in my mindset. Could we ever expect something like that? Or even along the lines of an audiobook? Um Okay, so audiobook is something I'm looking into. Uh, once again, that is a, an extra expense, and I, I've, mm-hmm. from the research I've done, it's a little bit more than um, your average printing costs because you have yeah. to commission someone. So uh, I would like to definitely uh, once I get the funds and find someone who I like uh, narration wise. As for a special edition, um, if I did anything, it would probably be on my website, uh, which is www.jeglasswrites.com. Um, it's over on WordPress. Uh, if I did anything, I would probably put it there since I don't I don't feel like that would be something I'd want to charge people for. I, I love talking about how my books are, are crafted and how my worlds are created. Um, so I don't know if I would necessarily do a uh, special edition like that. However, if I did do a special edition of Underground or what I would want to do is have art um, oh. done. Yeah, have like... <laughs> Um, illustrations throughout it and maybe it would be a hardback with like um, embossing under the uh, dust jacket mm-hmm. something you know like a little special um, mm-hmm. so possibly that I'd have to think about that in future but I would definitely love to have someone do um, illustrations with um, if I could find somebody because um, mm-hmm. my cover artist is very busy so I, I'd be like hey Ashley can you do this she'd be like no <laughs> I have too much work to do but if I could find somebody who'd be willing to do that, I would absolutely love to do illustrations. I'm writing that down because I feel like that'll be an amazing idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what advice would you give to aspiring self-publishing authors? Uh, just knuckle down and be prepared for it to take a bit. Um, it's going to take a bit to to get the writing done. It's going to take a bit to get your cover. It's going to take a bit to get your editing done and your formatting um, be realistic about your timeline. Uh, set a goal. Like mine was, you know, for April. And uh, realistically, I could have pushed that back a bit more. Um, that's what I'm doing with my next one. That blood and time with blood. Bl- eh, who can't speak with blood and times coming out. Is I'd like for it to be next April, but I might have to push it to July just to you know just because of time and how much it takes to get it done. Um, but also just. <laughs> Unless you hit that lottery, you're not going to be an instant bestseller. So don't get discouraged. Um, there are days where I don't sell a single copy and then suddenly I sell nine or three or one. Um, so just, you know, be prepared to also you know, market and market, market, market and try to get as many people, you know, in on your book as possible but just you know it it's a time thing it's a time suck it's a second job and as long as you're ready to do that you'll do fine Mm -hmm. what like can you like just wrap up in the one phrase which ones were the best and which ones were the worst part of self-publishing best part of self-publishing was seeing the final formatted piece uh, of my book uh, in front of me, best part being able to physically hold that. Worst part would be the editing and formatting process, just because it takes so long and there's a lot of heavy thinking involved with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I would also slightly amend that with the um, the marketing, because while editing and Formatting is part of the game. Trying to market and learning those ropes are equally hard. So I, I kind of went over that that one one sentence phrase, but uh, it's a, a even toss up. Mm-hmm. Um, I when I like went back to like I was going to start reading Blood and Times um, before this, right after I completed the Underground or Print version. Oh no. And I went back. Yes. I was like, what happened to your Wattpad account? I, okay. So, um, Wattpad's great, but Wattpad also has a problem with, um, a lot of their stories being stolen by mirror sites and a couple of other sites. And so Blood and Times actually got stolen by a couple of mirror sites and one very nefarious other site, um, who claimed to be me. Um, so, we had, we speaking as me and other authors, we had fought trying to get our books down and pulled out DCMAs and cease and desists, and they just kept popping up. 
And I was really afraid because I was going through and doing a whole overhaul on Bat that having the old version out there, uh, especially if I kept updating, uh, would be both confusing and then could also possibly lead to like legal issues. Um, so I just decided because I had already taken Undergrounder down and I was tired of having my work stolen that I was just going to go ahead and close the account, um, which it did hurt my heart. And I wish I could have brought everybody who I had on there over to my Twitter um, because I do miss talking with a lot of people who didn't have Twitter. Um, but ultimately, I just had to do what was best for my book. Mm -hmm. Which I understand. Um, I will be publishing Blood and Tines uh, same way I did Undergrounder um, through Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Um, I'll probably with that one uh, because I, I know the ropes a bit more, and I already have everything kind of squared away. I'm just polishing up the story. Is I'm going to do a bigger pre-order on that one through Amazon um, as well as through uh, physical copies. And I'm also um, thinking of doing uh, hardback with this one. Uh, with a specialty on um, sprayed edges, which I will actually be doing myself, um, spraying the edges and signing books. So those will be special edition. Uh, since Blood and Tines is a uh, it's a single it's a single novel, um, but it is a foundational novel for the rest of the world that I'm building. So I kind of want to do some special stuff with it uh, now that I know what what I'm doing essentially. Um, with the original version, uh, I think the the thing that I changed uh, the most was that I brought in um, another aspect of Lee's personality. Um, I really wanted to play with uh, that Jekyll and Hyde style storytelling, since that's actually my, my absolute favorite. I would love to do a Jekyll and Hyde re uh, retelling someday. Um, but I wanted to bring in Feral, and I really wanted to play with Feral and see what I could do uh, with that underlying personality that kind of starts to peek through later on in the story um and then obviously like how that leads into what's going to happen in the sequel uh which I, i'll apologize in advance for because i'm gonna get so much hate so how did you celebrate the completed version of undergrounder um, I, I think I just kind of sat there and blinked and then my wife was like, I'm taking you out for dinner. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, and that was pretty much it. Like, I, it's very surreal. Like, I, I wanted to say, I'd like to say that, you know, there's like this big party, but really it was just like, oh, it's done. Okay. Um, I will say I did have a really awesome launch party. Uh, had that oh. about a week before it kicked off and I had um, all my friends and family and a couple of colleagues of mine. Uh, we uh, went and rented out the back part of one of my favorite roadhouses and we were just rowdy and, you know, ate, drank, were merry, <laughs> talked about books, you know, sold some that were there. And so, yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. um, so throughout this process of, you know, writing the underground or turning it into print format, what was like the space that kept you going? Why did, how did that space look like? Was it a clear desk? Was it a messy background? It literally a glider rocker and a footstool <laughs> <laughs> in, in my room. That was mm -hmm. it. Like, um, I, I've since cleaned a bit more, um, but I have an old glider rocker that's like, that's my baby. Um, mm -hmm. It's my comfy chair. And I put my, my laptop on my knees and my feet up on my rocker and mm -hmm. I just sit there and I do my thing. Like, mm -hmm. I wish it was something cool, but it's not. <laughs> Same. <laughs> it's literally my chair and my desk for me. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're like, ah, yes, my den where I write. And, you know, meanwhile, you're sitting there like a you know, school desk. Like, yes, this is where I do my magic. Yep, this is where it's at. Um, so what would you say to, I'm going to specify, Lee... Alex and Rebecca, if you could meet them. Please don't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would just be apologies and then probably running because I think Alex might shoot me. I mean, actually, no, let's, let's amend that. Rebecca would shoot me. Mm -hmm. um, then Alex and then Lee would just be like, leave her alone. She meant well. Um, <laughs> you, you're, you would say your suffering is not in vain. <laughs> Um, you made me money. It's okay. <laughs> you made me money. <laughs> You're my cheap whore. It's fine. I'm just, I'm just your pimp. Um, yeah, it, I, I love those posts to be like, you know, if your main character popped up, you know, at your front door, what would you do? And it'd be like, I, honestly, I'd run because like all of my MCs are out for my blood at this point. I, I have, I have no hope. I would be six feet under so many times. For me. Ah, uh, this is kind of a spoiler. So, 
for me, I may or may not be a character in my own book series, not in my book that I'm writing. Oh, okay. Um, so, and it's not one of those I'm perfect characters, if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> Um, it's not that that that, that self insert you know uh, savior process. Mm-mm. It it's a bit more complicated. Like one character, he literally um, messaged me on Twitter. It's it's complicated, but I I hope people will get it. <laughs> um, I think they I think they will. But yeah, don't don't spoil too much because yeah. we all want to be we want to be surprised. Surprise. <laughs> so what is the up, update on Top Cider? So, um, Top Cider right now, I actually have um, the opener done, 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 done. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a wild bit of a wild bit of storytelling, um, but it is paused for the moment uh, because I'm working on Blood and Tines, uh, which is a, a much heavier story. So I gotta uh, put all my focus into that. Mm-hmm. Uh, after Bat is done, uh, once that is finished and ready to go, then I will jump straight into Underground Earth. That's my solemn promise. I have mm-hmm. nothing else planned after that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll start cranking that out. Um, but I do have a a pretty solid uh, beginning, middle, and end. I've got the scaffolds mm-hmm. for Top Sider done now. The ending is all done. Like in my head, I could I could sit down right now and, and pretty much type it out, you know, mm-hmm. scene for scene. I've got the last three or four chapters already finished. Um, it's just, you know, filling in the gaps and, uh, kind of playing with some new characters that we're gonna, we're gonna meet along the way. Um, you know, Cedric's gonna make a bit more of an appearance, uh, whether that's a good or bad thing, we'll have to leave that to, uh, interpretation. And, uh, oh, we don't, well, we don't know. I mean, he's, yeah, I mean, eh. God bless him. He's a necessary evil. Uh, so we will, uh, we'll, we'll know what that means later on, but, uh. So yeah, it's got a solid scaffold. Um, I just got to put the meat and uh, the rest of the the skin on the story to really kick it off. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last question of this podcast episode is like, what can we expect from you in the future? So obviously we have Top Sider um, that will mm-hmm. be coming out along, and then uh, the third installment of that will be Insider. Uh, so we do have those. I like yeah. These titles. So- <laughs> Yeah, um, well, it, we we love the the er endings there because I was like, mm-hmm. I'll be you know, I'll be cool and and make up my own words here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have those three. That's the uh, the undergrounder trilogy or the underground trilogy are those three: undergrounder, topsider, and insider. Mm-hmm. Um, Blood and Tines is the foundational story that actually uh, starts back in sixteen sixty seven, Scotland. So that's the foundational for the world that I'm creating. Um, and then after that, we have my my big big baby, um, and that will be Ether Roots, which is a standalone, which will kind of bring all of these worlds, uh, both Blood and Tines, Undergrounder, and a couple of others, um, into full circle and kind of finish the story of the community there. Um, so, and that's that that's an enormous novel. I am so amped to write that one. Um, if I'm being honest, those are like those are my babies. The yeah. the four cast members for that and the world that I've created for them is yeah. it's enormous and it's amazing and I cannot wait to have people meet them. Um, but yeah, so those are those are the five main stories that I have planned. Uh, there may be a few spinoffs along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an idea for a couple of uh, uh, spots that would include uh, some of Cedric and his crew. Um, uh, fun little caper novels um, but beyond that just those five for right now well I can't wait make sure to email me or text me or whatever you have to do <laughs> because I'm definitely going to buy it <laughs> definitely going to buy it <laughs> just, send you, just send you links on, on discord and be like hey hey Dimitri here you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah just send me links on not discord no but you can send me a link on literally anything twitter I, I don't never text people on twitter but yeah, and I'll buy it. And hopefully, maybe, possibly, you could keep the signed editions of the Undergrounder series. Keep come, let them keep coming. I, I stand that. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, like I said, I, I will put out a call for you know those who would want a hard copy, and we can uh, we could work something out. Mm-hmm. 